So a couple of years ago, I was walking across campus, and there was this booth advertising for free pizza. And I thought to myself, well, that sounds like a fine idea. So I walk up to the booth, and I inquire on how to acquire this free pizza. And this person and the woman working behind the counter, she says, well, you have to fill out this survey, and then afterwards we'll give you your pizza. So if that's really free, I'll let you all decide. We can discuss that later. But nevertheless, I start taking the survey, and it becomes very apparent very quickly that this survey is about alcohol consumption, a reasonable thing to be engaged with on a college and university campus, and the community at large. And so I start filling it out, and I take a couple of minutes, I fill it out, and I turn it back in. The lady, she looks at it, and she kind of gives it a little bit of an eye. She waves over a gentleman that was off to the side, and she hands him my survey. He starts looking at it and he says, hey, do you mind if I talk to you for a second? <laughs> and, and I say, yeah, that's, that's fine. And so we go, and remember, I still haven't got my pizza at this point. Right? <laughs> and so I walk over and he says, you know, judging by your answers to this survey, it seems as if you consume a decent amount of alcohol week after week. And I thought to myself on how to address this situation. And most calmly and, and, and collectively as possible, I told him, you know, sir, with all due respect, I manage a restaurant and wine bar. <laughs> it's my job to drink wine. <laughs> Every week I have distributors that come in bringing new and exciting wines up from all over the world, and I taste through them trying to enhance and, uh, and add to a very vibrant wine list for this wine bar and restaurant. And he says, okay, and we talk for a second, and I say, you know, I think I've got a pretty good gauge, and I appreciate your concern, but ultimately, you know, I feel pretty confident in myself. And he says, all right, well, if you ever, you know, feel out of kilter or whatnot, come talk to me. <laughs> and so I eventually do get my pizza. <laughs> but I was struck with that interaction for a little while, because I was left with a couple of options. If I received the survey, and I could have just answered very quickly, I could have just checked, no, 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 once a month, lied. <laughs> but rather, as I was filling out the survey, I was trying to answer honestly. I was trying to answer authentically. And that's what I want to talk about today, is how do we live authentically? And is living authentically even possible? It's a very challenging question. And by way of examining and by investigating how one can live authentically, I think it's helpful to first examine what inauthentic living looks like. So by way of looking at inauthenticity, we can perhaps arrive at looking at what authentic living is. And my guide for today, kind of the lens by which I'm operating, is from the French existentialist philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre of the mid-20th century. Now to live inauthentically, is to live, for Sartre, and I think he's right here, is to live a life of excuse. And when we think about excuses, there must be some distinction between excuses, reasons, justifications. There's a whole gamut of how we can investigate that conversation. But in short, how I've come to term excuses and how I'm going to use excuses today is excuses, in my mind, are the have to. I have to go to work. I have to study for this exam. I have to dress this particular way. I have to eat this kind of way. I have to date this type of person. I have to believe in this kind of thing. And we are really, really, really good at making I have to's. I would venture to say that we make them hour after hour, day after day, that we really build our lives around those things that we think we have to do. And when we think about this, and what Sartre claims, and again, I, I, I'm buying, his, buying what he's selling here, but when we think about the have-tos, ultimately what we're doing is we are placing our responsibility not on ourselves, but something outside of ourselves. As if work controlled me, as if my clothing style or what I think I have to dress like controls me, as that test controls me. And if we think that we are free individuals, which I would maintain most of us would like to believe that we are, we really don't have to do anything. 
And that's a striking proposition, right? Because again, our mind is so set up in a way where we think we have to do so many things. But I could very well choose to not study for that exam. Yes, I will be responsible for that choice, but that doesn't negate choice. And so when we think about excuses and why we make them, ultimately we are left with all of these have-tos. And for Sartre, and I think, again, he's right, that living inauthentically, living in these have-tos, is ultimately denying our responsibility. And that is a very good glimpse at living inauthentically. So the question becomes then, how does one live authentically? If living a life inauthentically is living a life of the have-tos, how can we change that? I think it's actually very simple. I think that by changing not only what we say, but how it is we think, we can start to change and enter into ourselves in a way to live perhaps more authentically. And that change that I challenge myself with, that I challenge my students with, is very small, but yet, I think, very powerful. That whenever we have the inclination to say, I have to, a very, very small change verbally, the I am choosing to, or I am. And what that does, even on a very minute level, it changes the way that we gauge our actions. It changes the way that we gauge our existence in the world as a being that matters, that can do things. And I think that's very, very powerful. I am choosing to go to work. I am choosing to take on this job that I get to drink wine weekly. Right? <laughs> I am choosing to dress this particular way because it best represents myself. I am choosing to enter into a relationship with this person because I feel like they are best suited for me. I am choosing to study for this exam. And when we do that, and when we condition ourselves to think about things in terms of choice, as I am choosing to, I think we're left with a couple of responses. I think we're left with two, maybe more, primarily two. One, I think it's terrifying. Because what it does when we recognize our choice in the world is that places our responsibility on us. And frankly, I don't think we like that all too much. That's why we make so many excuses. And so when we think about things in terms of choice, when we place that responsibility on ourselves, we are confronted in this vulnerable position by which we're aware of ourselves in a real and rich kind of way. And ultimately, and aside from that challenge of kind of entering in in that sort of way, what it also does is I think it's really liberating. Because what it does is it allows us to be aware of ourselves, it allows us to re recognize that we can make a difference in the world by our choices. And when we do that, ultimately we will recognize that we are beings with power. We are beings that can influence, that can make decisions, and ultimately we are in charge of ourselves. And I think that that is a very liberating proposition. And I think it's a very short and small guide on how one can live authentically. Thank you.